So we're more or less happy that if you're trying to, uh, if, you're, if you're a manufacturer, you're making something, you're trying to sell it, you're probably going to go through some kind of a um, wholesaler if it's a consumer good, and then it's going to go to some kind of a shop, and then people are going to buy it. The art here is really um, selecting the right wholesalers, you know, the ones that are appropriate for your product, making sure that they're appropriately trained. So, big point really, place makes a difference to how, how you think about products. So, what really, what does a distribution channel do? What does the place, the way that you get your products or your services to market do? It creates um, a level of satisfaction, I guess, utility, um, in the whole buying process, provided it's appropriate to the price level that, that you're charging. Uh, it, makes, uh, it makes it easier to buy something, if you think about it. Um, and again, that needs to be appropriate. You would travel to, uh, you travel some distance, maybe to buy a Mac, you travel some distance to buy um, I don't know, a Bulgari necklace. You probably wouldn't travel that far to buy a Mars bar. That's what I mean about the appropriateness of place. It's about matching the price and the quality of the item with the place that you buy it. Standardize the types of transactions you're doing and most importantly, really, um, provide a decent customer service. Which is back down here in terms of people. Is everybody more or less happy in kind of in the area we're talking about? Just getting stuff into the hands of people, basically. But it's about power, it's about the, 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 the effect of that on price, and it's about convenience for the customers. And a distribution channel that does its job well is not having a major impact on price, is making life easier for customers, by giving them the product in the form that they want it, at the time that they want it, close to the point that they want to buy it. And that's kind of how they're adding value. Generally speaking, um, if you're talking about distribution strategies, you're talking about an intensive strategy, a selective strategy, or an exclusive strategy. Okay, give an example for me for that. Yeah, your high-end luxury goods, that, that kind of stuff. So, I don't know, Rolex, Ferraris, super yachts, basically not your everyday purchases. And there's, there's sort of a sliding, sliding scale here. Um, um, what else? <coughs> Ferraris, I guess. The special BMWs. Um, if you're, you're, you're down at the other end, you're kind of in Mars bars, crisps, peanuts, that, that, that fast-moving consumer <coughs> goods generally. Uh, and it kind of, I think, makes sense. If you're, if you're doing this, right, you want the maximum number of outlets um, everywhere. You want your product continually available to people. Um, it, it, it's a convenience purchase. It's an impulse purchase. It's, it's usually a purchase that you're just a little bit hungry or you just something, want something quickly. Um, it's something people are going to buy a lot of. Um, they don't have much planning for it. It's typically low priced. Up at the other end, high price, a lot of planning, seldom bought, um, low number of purchases, which kind of dictates high price if you think about it. Usually you're making your money in two ways, you're either selling a lot of something and taking a small amount of money, or selling a small number of things and taking a lot of money. Um, the, more, the closer you are to exclusive, um, uh, sorry, exclusive, the closer you are to an exclusive distribution strategy, typically the higher your price, uh, the more uh, sought after your product, the fewer, you, uh, the, the, the fewer your points of distribution, um, the more targeted your promotion, uh, the higher the level of training that you're giving to, to the people who are selling your product, the, um, the classier, if you like, it's probably not the right word, but you know, the classier the environment in which you're selling it, and also the process through which the product is sold and delivered will be different. That, that will be slicker and more luxurious. 
certainly, certainly is with Apple just on, 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 on laptops. You know, it's a very slick process. The further away you are from your home base, your, your home territory, uh, the more likely you are to need a distributor. Because you're, you're working in areas where you kind of don't understand where the culture is maybe different, where the buyer's needs are different. So you kind of want specialist local help and support. Also, you're moving your products a long way, and the, which takes, again, some kind of specialist knowledge, like shipping, transportation, that kind of stuff. If you remember before, we were talking about the different types of channel that you might have. You might go direct, you might go through an agent and distributor. Uh, you might have maybe, as a manufacturer, six, seven, eight different distribution channels. Those distribution channels are going to be in competition one with the other. Everybody who works in any uh, part of those distribution channels is going to think that they are the single most important person in your business. You have a group of people all in competition with one another. Um, and, and as a channel manager, if you're overseeing this lot, you need to kind of keep them disciplined, keep them focused, keep them all moving in the same way. Um, keep them all focused on the customers and delivering value. And it's, it's your job to do that. It's pretty much their job to look after the vested interests of their, their organization. It's your job to look after the products and help them deliver value to the customers. So we've got competition kind of like that between maybe Tesco and Oops, Asda, um, which would be horizontal competition uh, in supermarkets for maybe milk, perhaps. Um, Intertype competition, which is maybe going to be competition between uh, Tesco, we'll say, and I don't know, the local corner shop. We'll put them up here. Um, we got. He's with them, he's with them. Those guys are still at it. Um, then uh, vertical competition, competition between different levels in the channel. So if you, these are your retailers and you've got a distrib distributor, perhaps. So those t guys, to an extent, are going to be competing one with the other you know, to get the better products, to uh, get the better contracts. Um, and uh, what else are you going to have? You're going to have competition between different types of channels, which is channel system competition. So if maybe uh, as a manufacturer you're selling your products direct to uh, end, end users over the internet, whatever, you're also putting your products out through distribution. Think of Apple, they work for the iPhones, they sell uh, online. They sell through Apple stores. They sell through uh, other retailers like EE e e or O2. Essentially, those routes to market, those routes to the customer are all in competition with one another. And a customer is looking around at those, those different ways of getting hold of the product and picking the one that works best. So those three routes, if you like, are all competing for the same customer. The more channels you have, the more ways you have of getting your product or service to consumers, that is a good thing. On the other hand, the, the more channels you have, the more competition you are creating in the delivery system to customers, and that becomes increasingly difficult to manage.